All right, so today we're uh, we're diving into something, you know, pretty fascinating. Okay. We've got this stack of blog posts from the OG Brooklyn Boys Ministry. Right. And let me tell you the story here. Yeah. Is anything but ordinary. Okay. We're talking about uh, an organization born from the streets of New York City, uh-huh. now dedicated to upliftment. And get this okay. hemp-based wellness. Wow. Talk about an interesting mix. It's definitely an intriguing combination. It is. Yeah. So you've gone through their website. I have. What struck you as like the most uh-huh. unexpected thing about their approach? Okay. I mean, the name OG Brooklyn Boys alone right. hints at a past yeah. that most wouldn't associate with community outreach, right. let alone hemp. Exactly. Yeah, you're right. The name does grab your attention. Right. And you're not wrong to think about their past. Yeah. Several blog posts like um, Bronx Kingpin and Echoes of Shadows mm. really delve into their history. What's interesting isn't just the contrast, yeah. but how they seem to use their experiences to inform their work today. Okay, so let's unpack this a bit. Sure. We know their roots trace back to the Bronx. But what kind of specifics are we we talking about here? Give us a little context without, you know, glorifying anything. Sure, the sources allude to a past. Okay. Intertwined with some of the tougher aspects of street life. Okay. Think along the lines of gang involvement and the kind of situations that often come with that territory. Mm -hmm. It's not about romanticizing it. Right. But understanding how that period might have shaped their outlook on community and the challenges people face. Makes sense. Yeah. It's like they're taking their life experiences and saying, okay, yeah. how can we use this to help others avoid going down a similar path? Exactly. So where does Edwin Maldonado fit into all of this? So Edwin is the founder of the OG Brooklyn Boys Ministry, and his story is really central to understanding their mission. Right. His name kept popping up in the blog post. Yeah. What stood out to me was this whole uh-huh. from most wanted to most helpful vibe I got. Yeah. Is that an accurate read? Absolutely. The blog post titled From Fugitive to Samaritan dives into Edwin's past. Okay. He was actually a fugitive <laughs> featured on America's Most Wanted. Really? To go from that to leading a community organization is quite a transformation. Wow. Fugitive. Talk about a life makeover. Yeah. Okay, so he went from being on the run to running a ministry. Right. His story must be pretty powerful. It is. He doesn't shy away from his past in the blog posts Mm. in Soul's Triumph. He talks about how those experiences were a turning point, leading him to dedicate his life to helping others. It really seems like he's trying to offer guidance and support to those who might be facing similar struggles. It's like he's using his story as a way to connect with people on a deeper level, saying, I've been there, I get it, and there's another way. Exactly. It makes you wonder what specific experiences from his past might be informing the work they're doing today. That's a great question. What's the through line here? And to answer that, we need to look at the present day work of the OG Brooklyn Boys Ministry. Okay. Which is about a lot more than just religious conversion. Okay. It's actually surprisingly practical in its approach. You keep using the word holistic. Right. What does that actually look like in practice? It means they're addressing the needs of the whole person. Body, mind, and spirit. Okay. We're talking about tangible support, not just spiritual guidance. Gotcha. So it's less about preaching and more about providing practical help. Exactly. What are some examples from the blog posts that illustrate this? One thing that really stood out was their work with children who have mental health challenges. Okay. The website talks about kids saying their first words or becoming seizure-free after working with them. Really? They even have a program specifically for veterans, which seems to be a cause close to Edwin's heart, given his past. Wow, those are pretty remarkable outcomes. Yeah. Helping a child speak for the first time or supporting veterans who are struggling. That's really impactful stuff. Absolutely. It makes you wonder what methods are they using to achieve these results. Right. Are there any insights in the blog posts about their approach? There are, and it's actually one of the most surprising aspects of the ministry. Okay. They're heavily involved in what they call real hemp and hemp-based wellness. Okay. They even have entire blog posts dedicated to CBD and the endocannabinoid system. Now, that's not something you see every day from a faith-based organization. Right. It's definitely not your typical church basement mm. operation. Right. What exactly is real hemp, according to them, yeah. and how does it tie into their overall mission? That's a great question, and it, uh, it really gets at the heart of their philosophy. Okay. They're really passionate about what they call real hemp, mm-hmm. which seems to be hemp grown and processed without 
know, any harmful additives or chemicals. Okay. They see it as a natural way to support overall well-being. Right. And they link it directly to their holistic approach. So they're not just advocating for any hemp product. No. But specifically for something that they believe is pure. Right. And more aligned with their values. Exactly. And they connect this to yep. their belief in empowering people to take control of their own health. Sure. They're not just saying, here, take this. Yeah. They're providing information about the endocannabinoid system, right. CBD, and how these things work in the body. It's interesting that they're embracing something that's often misunderstood or even stigmatized, especially in a religious context. Right. It speaks to their willingness to challenge conventions yeah. and explore unconventional solutions if they believe it can help people. Yeah, and they're not just talking the talk. Okay. They're actually using have derived products in their program. Okay. There's a blog post that talks about how they use CBD oil to help veterans manage pain and anxiety. Wow, that's pretty progressive. Yeah. I'm curious, do they mention anything about pushback they've received for incorporating hemp into their ministry? You know, they don't go into detail in these particular blog posts. Okay. They mostly focus on the positive outcomes right. and the science behind it. But yeah. It's definitely something to consider. It would be fascinating to learn more about how they navigate those conversations yeah. and address any potential skepticism. Absolutely. Okay, so they're using a mix of traditional support right. and let's call it alternative methods. Right. But at the end of the day, what matters is the impact. Exactly. And the OG Brooklyn Boys website is full of personal stories, testimonials about how their lives have changed because of this organization. Right. Did any of those stories stand out to you? They're all incredibly moving. Yeah. But there's one about a veteran named Michael that I found particularly powerful. Okay. He was dealing with chronic pain, PTSD, mm -hmm. and he even needed a walker to get around. Wow, that's a lot to deal with. Right. But after going through the OG Brooklyn Boys Veterans Wellness Program, he was able to stop taking his medication, regain his strength, and walk freely again. You mentioned they have a program specifically for veterans. Yeah. Are there any details about how that program differs from their other services? They actually go into quite a bit of detail about the Veterans Wellness Program. Okay. It includes things like fitness training, nutrition counseling, mm -hmm. and of course education and support for incorporating hemp-based wellness practices. Okay. They seem to take a very personalized approach. Yeah. Tailoring the program to each veteran's specific needs and challenges. So it's not just a one-size-fits-all program, but right. something designed to address the unique experiences of veterans. Exactly. That makes a lot of sense. I'm looking at their website now, yeah. and it looks like they've expanded beyond New York City, right? That's right. They've got programs in Texas, wow. Puerto Rico, Philadelphia, Chicago, and Los Angeles. Wow. They're really expanding their reach. Yeah. That's impressive growth. What do you think is driving that expansion? I think it speaks to the growing need for the kind of holistic support they offer. Mm -hmm. They're addressing a gap that traditional social services often miss. Yeah. And people are taking notice. It's like they've tapped into something universal. Right. A desire for support that goes beyond the surface level. Yeah. And addresses the whole person. Their willingness to embrace unconventional methods like hemp-based wellness probably contributes to their appeal as well. I would agree with it. They're not afraid to be different. Yeah. To challenge the status quo. Right. And that resonates with people, especially those who may have felt let down by more traditional approaches. So we've covered a lot of ground here. We have. We've talked about their unconventional origins, their holistic approach to community service, right. their unique use of hemp-based wellness, and their impressive impact, as evidenced by the testimonials on their website. But there's one thing I'm still curious about. What I'm wondering is this. With all this success, yeah. with the growth they've experienced it, have they said anything about their long-term vision? Right. What's next for the OG Brooklyn Boys Ministry? That's a great question. And unfortunately, these blog posts don't really delve into their future plans. Okay. They're mostly focused on showcasing their current work and the impact they're having. Okay, so they're keeping their cards close to their chest for now. Yeah. Fair enough. But it does make you wonder, right. where do they go from here? Yeah. They've already established themselves as a unique force in the world of community service. I think that's what makes them so fascinating. Yeah. They've challenged our assumptions about what it means to be a force for good in the world. Absolutely. We often think of traditional charities or faith-based organizations. Right. But the OG Brooklyn Boys Ministry is doing something different. Yeah. They're blending 
street smarts with a genuine desire to uplift their community. And they're not afraid to explore unconventional avenues like hemp-based wellness if it means making a difference. Exactly. They've shown that sometimes the most impactful solutions come from those unexpected places. It's a good reminder that we should always be open to new possibilities, new yes. approaches. There's no one-size-fits-all solution to the challenges facing our communities. And sometimes the most powerful stories of transformation right. come from those who have navigated those challenges themselves. Exactly. Edwin Maldonado's journey from being a fugitive to becoming a community leader is a testament to that. Absolutely. He could have easily continued down a different path, right? but instead he chose to use his experiences to create something positive. And in doing so, he's not only changing the lives of those he's helping, but he's also challenging our preconceived notions about right. redemption, second chances, and the power of unconventional approaches to community service. Well said, and on that note, I think we've reached the end of our deep dive into the world of the OG Brooklyn Boys Ministry. Yeah. It's been quite a journey, and we've uncovered some fascinating insights along the way. It's definitely an organization that makes you think. Mm -hmm. And I have a feeling we'll be hearing more from them in the future. I have a feeling you're right. They're definitely a group to watch. Absolutely. And for you listening, if this deep dive has sparked your curiosity, yeah. I encourage you to do your own exploration. Check out the OG Brooklyn Boys Ministry website. Mm -hmm. Delve into their blog posts and see what resonates with you. Right. You never know. You might just discover your own path to making a difference. Until next time. <laughs>